नॉर्मा लिट्रेलिस और द लेटल व्यू इन नॉर्मा लिट्रेलिस ऑल द बोन्स विच कैन बी सीन फ्रॉम द लेटल व्यू दैट कम्स इन नॉर्मा लिट्रेलिस सो यू कैन सी देर इज अ वेराइटी ऑफ बोन विच कैन बी सीन फ्रॉम द लेटल साइड फ्रंटल बोन पेराइटल बोन स्क्वेमस पार्ट ऑफ द टेम्परल बोन स्वीनॉइड बोन जाइगोमैटिक बोन मैगजिला नेजल बोन मैंडिबल बोन मेस्टाइड बोन एंड एंटीरियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द ऑस्पिटल बोन The important features which are present in normal lateralis are the temporal lines. These temporal line starts from the zygomatic process of the frontal bone. Anteriorly they are merged. But when they comes to the parietal bone, the superior temporal line and inferior temporal line is separated. The superior temporal line can also be viewed from the normal verticalis. When we trace superior temporal line posteriorly it goes and posteriorly it fades away while the inferior temporal line if we trace the inferior temporal line from the parietal bone it goes backward posteriorly and then goes downward and then continues with the supramastoid crest this is supramastoid crest and this supramastoid crest mm. then continued with the posterior root of the zygomatic arch second important feature in normal lateralis is this zygomatic arch it starts from here till here the anterior one third of the zygomatic arch is formed by the temporal part of the zygomatic bone while the posterior two third of the zygomatic arch is formed by the zygomatic process of the temporal bone this is zygomatic arch and there is a suture which is present in the middle of the zygomatic arch and this suture is called as zygomatico temporal suture another important feature which is present in this view is the external acoustic meatus the external acoustic meatus anteriorly and inferiorly is formed by the tympanic part of the temporal bone or the tympanic plate of the temporal bone postero superiorly it is formed by the squamous part of the temporal bone so you can see there is a small portion of the squamous part which is forming the posterior superior part of the external acoustic meatus supramatal triangle supramatal triangle is a triangle which is present postero superiorly to the external acoustic meatus this triangle is bounded superiorly by the supramastoid crest inferiorly by the squamous part of the temporal bone posteriorly it is bounded by a imaginary line or a vertical tangent which is combining this supramatal crest with the squamous part of the temporal bone so this is supramatal triangle next is this is the mastoid part of the temporal bone the mastoid part of the temporal bone is present posteriorly to the external acoustic meatus this mastoid part makes a suture with the parietal bone and that suture is called as parieto mastoid suture this mastoid part also make a suture with the occipital bone and this suture is called as occipito mastoid or mastoido occipital suture asterion asterion is a point 
where the three sutures meet parietomastoid suture lambdoid suture and occipitomastoid suture meet this is asterion another process which can be seen from the lateral view is the stylite process it is a long projection from the norma basalis this is stylite process the apex of the stylite process is hidden from the front view because of the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible the mandible attaches over here so you can see the stylite part or the apex of the stylite part can be hidden from the view because of this ramus of the mandible in normal lateralis we will also study about the temporal fossa temporal fossa is bounded above by the temporal lines of the frontal bone these are the temporal line inferiorly it is bound, bounded by the two things on the lateral aspect it is formed by the superior border of the zygomatic arch and on the medially it is formed by the infratemporal crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid so this is infratemporal crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid you can see there is a gap behind the zygomatic arch so through this gap the temporal fossa communicates with the infratemporal fossa the anterior wall of the temporal fossa is formed by the zygomatic bone posterior aspect of the zygomatic bone sphenoid bone and by the part of the frontal bone this is its anterior wall the floor this is the floor of the temporal fossa these three fingers shows the extent of temporal fossa so the floor of the temporal fossa is formed by four bones frontal bone parietal bone squamous part of the temporal bone and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone these four bones are joined together to form an h shaped suture you can see this is the one limb of h the horizontal limb and this is another limb of h so the point where these four bones meet that point is called as terion this is the terion now this temporal fossa communicates with the infratemporal fossa the infratemporal fossa is also an important part of the normal lateralis i will tell a little detail about the infratemporal fossa in this it will also be studied later this is basically the infratemporal fossa this area is infratemporal fossa means the area which is present below the temporal fossa it is called as the infratemporal fossa that's all about normal lateralis